Molo Sanbonani, hello, how's it? Shalom. Good day, people. Welcome to another vlog here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. It's vlog 130. I'm trying something new on the channel, a, a, a series within my vlogs that I'll call Reaction, re the Reaction Series, where I'm hoping you uh, will share and send me video clips, you know, short video clips of, you know, the, the the usual crazies in our society, the, the broad left, the woke left, uh, you know, the, 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 the blabbity blacks, as I sometimes call those who are leftists who trade on their black skin. And of course, the social justice warrior uh, types and um, the self-flagellating whites. Uh, all of these categories of a broad coalition of leftists, people who are on the left of spectrum, in our political discourse who have simply gone absolutely nuts. And we see them around the world. <laughs> and uh, trust me, in me saying that, we also have those crazy lefties here in this country. So in this, the first of my reaction series, I'm going to share a clip of, oh man, three, uh, I'm assuming they are a Zapo. Uh, members. Zapo is one of those ultra leftist parties here in South Africa that has literally died out because I've always told you this before. Extreme left positions are simply not popular in this country. Extreme left, uh, especially pan Africanist positions, for as much as the rhetoric they use is very pervasive in the mainstream and amongst the establishment, their actual politics is not popular in this country, which is testament to the fact that since 1994, such extreme left parties, Azapo, Azania, um, the PAC, have simply died out um, in the actual formal political space. And that the only refuge they have now are places like the EFF, which themselves are arguably, based on the last results, plateauing. But hey, that's not what we're gonna uh, prosecute on this issue, uh, on this show, pardon me. I wanna quickly share this video with you and let's react together. Uh, this is a video sent by Jacques Brutreich, who of course, is was was at the Johannesburg High Court uh, with his colleagues at Afri Forum as they are looking to have the hateful song of the past in this country, the Kill the Boer song, declared hate speech. And that those court proceedings were disrupted by these individuals. <laughs> And we are not going to be frightened by white fragility. This is our heritage. This, this music. We are not heritage. going to massage your feelings. We are not going to massage your white that fragility, your white privilege. This, this is not happening. This is not, not in this about day a song. And age. This is not about a song. This is about our history. It is our history that is on trial here today. It is our struggle for history that you want to denigrate. Really? I mean, seriously, your, your, your heritage, your history is about killing other groups of people. That's your history. And it should offend you that they do this and they speak so boldly as they do, whilst at the same time affecting or pretending to trade on behalf of black people. That is how offensive the woke left, I, I, especially leftists who appropriate and trade on their skin color. In this case, I call them Blavity Blacks. Blavity, of course, being a US magazine uh, for woke millennials, where a lot of these rhetoric, uh, a lot of this rhetoric, a lot of these talking points you'll find on there, the notion of white fragility and white uh, supremacy, a lot of this language that is yoked to the left today, uh, the identity politics left. This is the nonsense you're watching black leftists in this country, just like their white counterparts in this country appropriate and they basically import from America, if I'm to be brutally honest. Our struggles history that you want to ask, have us denied. It is not going to happen, not today, not in the future. You want to whitewash our history mm -hmm. and pretend that it never happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> Suddenly whitewash is okay to use as an expression. They'll be sensitive on anything else that's that's quote, quote unquote black blackness or pro black. But hey, no, in their lexicon, happy to use whitewash. Lol. Again, this is the stupidity you're dealing with, and it's why I often denigrate and make fun 
of these people a lot because their ideas simply do not take hold in the broader population in this country. Black South Africans are not walking around looking to trade on their skin color to, to effectively, uh, you know, on, on the oppression spectrum, on the victimhood spectrum, basically argue as the lefties and the work types do that having black skin is a site of oppression. We don't think like that. And it's equal much as me saying we don't think like that is also I need to recognize that black people don't think a certain way simply because they're black. Equally, white people don't think a certain way simply because they're white. It is those racialized, racist, and racial politics in this country which we actually need to disavow and defeat. That's why standing, as I do, for non-racialism is very important. The idea that I will not treat you a certain way simply because you have a certain skin color. Because if I did do that, how different would I be to apartheid politicians? or colonial politicians who quite literally passed legislation, formed institutions designed to go after, or rather to benefit one racial grouping over another. The current administration, the current ANC government does exactly the same thing, albeit they'll justify their behavior in copying the past by arguing that, no, 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 we do this like they did, but to correct the past. It's those sort of mental gymnastics, it's those sort of racist ideologies that see people like this be developed, who will happily walk into a court of law, an institution aimed and meant to administer law in a non-racial way and argue in court that no, singing a song about killing a group of people, you know, at face value farmers, because Boer is just a translation of farmer, but it's beyond that culturally because Boer also has the cultural connotations of white Afrikaners. So singing that song about killing those people is their heritage, they argue. And worse yet, they argue it's the heritage of black people. It's not. It's not. And this is the problem with uh, the, the work types, the blavity blacks, the social justice warrior types, the self-flagellating whites, these leftists who basically control the culture and literally control the corporate media in this country. They are the cultural voice or correction. They're the loudest voice. But then being the loudest voice doesn't mean they're the most pervasive voice or the most representative voice. But hey, what do you think? What do you think about that video? Um, uh, don't get me wrong, I had a good laugh at it uh, because you know it will not have an impact on what is happening in that courtroom because the courts should be, and I would hope, as we all do, impartial and we'll hear the arguments as they play out in court. That's what we'd all hope. But it's, all, it's still worth a good laugh. Drop me a comment, leave me a comment, like this video, please, if you enjoy it. If you enjoy this format, let me know. I'll do more videos like this where I react to stuff. In fact, you can send me the, your videos to bdl at bigdaddylibertyshow.com. With that being said, thank you for watching. And remember, as I always say at the end of every video, in fact, you saw them in this one, never trust a commie. <laughs>